homosexual when we were in junior high. Should have brought girls. The girls that you like don't give a shit about camping. They sure as hell wouldn't have any good stores. Hey, what's the hurry, Franco? You gotta get there before sundown. What'd he say? Hey, he said Alex is on cooler detail. Yeah, hey, no, 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 fuck you. I'm not taking this the whole way. Alex, you lost fair and square, man. So, now he's in bed. Naked, right? And the midget starts taking off her clothes. Little person. Now, at this point, he's still thinking he's gonna go through with this, right? Right. The midget jumps up on the bed. Except she doesn't just jump, she kind of does this like one legged swivel jump that kind of pops her right up there, butt naked. <laughs> he just loses it. I bet. Where are we headed? We're in the middle of the woods. We're gonna be surrounded by trees everywhere we go. Colin. Being a knight used to be something special back then. Yeah, exactly. It was like a feat of strength, right? It required an act of bravery. Like, what are some famous knights? Like Sir Lancelot? Yeah, okay. Sir, Sir Gawain? Of course. Who's Sir Gawain? Uh, he was the guy who... He was the green knight. This is it. We're here. Where's here? What is this? It's what? Oh, hey, look at that. Sorry, you got that? Yeah. Holy smokes. Wow, you can hear violins. Go on, Spiro. Say something stupid. It's just so beautiful. I think we're getting a heart on it. There it is. Yep. Oh, yeah, there it is. Big old heart on it. There we go. Okay, guys, I'm gonna run my fourth beer. Better start with the stories while sober enough to act like I'm interested. You're just saying that because yours always suck. You guys remember the lame exploding fox? That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was fucking good. You guys just didn't get it. You didn't get it. What's there to get? Your asshole cousin taped dynamite to a fox and it blew him up. It's not really interesting. It's just basic math. It's idiots plus explosives equals exploded idiots. Yeah. It's not that we didn't get it. We just didn't really like it. Yeah, I'll remember that when it's your turn, Alex. Anyways. Tonight, I got ones to make all your stories sound like, like, um... Like the limb exploding fox story? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so good, Spear, why don't you just go first? No way, ma'am, saving the best for last. Let Alex will get his out of the way. I'm not going first, and my story is a lot better than yours, guaranteed. Okay, well, someone's gonna have to go first, I guess. What about you, Colin? You pick the spot, why don't you kick it off? Colin? Fuck 
anyway. Hey, I told you not to use that language. Oh, uh, yeah? What language is that, Mom? English? Oh, don't be a smart mouth, okay? And save the filth for your idiotic word. word. It's not like you haven't heard it a hundred times well, before. Well, it doesn't mean that I want to hear it coming out of something that came out of me. What? I don't drink out of the bottle, Galton. I swear you need a leak. You know, I wouldn't swear so much if you ever got off my fucking... Where the hell's my iPod? It's up on your dresser. And Okay, answer this question for me, Colin. How come it is you cringe every time I mention anything that's remotely related to sex, yeah. and yet you feel perfectly comfortable slipping in the fuck word in every single conversation okay, okay, we okay, have? Okay, okay, enough. Wait, it doesn't sound so nice, does it? Enough, but, I get it. But why? It's just a word. Oh, not when you say it. It doesn't sound right coming out of your mouth. Well, that's the way it should sound coming out of everyone's mouth, including yours. You know what, Mom? I'm late for school, and I can't hear any lectures. I'm not going to get tested on. You might push something important out. But you are going to be tested on it, baby boy, every single day. Uh-huh. Whatever. Since when? Yes, I'm aware of that, Richard, but how was I supposed to know what she was thinking of? Oh, how you so pretty. Listen, can I call you back? Okay, I'm late, and I can't talk in here. I'll, I'll get a ticket. I'll call you when I get there, okay? Yes, I remember. I remember. a set of rules for a few, and then a completely different set for everyone else. Why not? It would be chaos, that's why. Well, that's like saying every person has the same restrictions as the dumbest, most dangerous Colin person Francis? on the planet. Mr. Francis. Yes, sorry. Welcome back. Thank you. This gentleman from administration says he has to have a word with you outside the hallway. Off you go. All right, everybody, where were we? I'm afraid I have some bad news, Mr. Francis. Your mother has been in an accident. We have someone waiting to drive you to the hospital. Time to go, son. I'm gonna stay. They're gonna take her down to the morgue. We're not allowed to go down there. I keep thinking of the last thing I said to her. I never know how important it was gonna be. What was the last thing you said to her? Goodbye. I'm going to stay. It's Colin. I can't answer the phone right now. Just leave a message after the beep. Hey, birthday boy. You didn't make it to class. You're probably still asleep. 
must be hard on the bones hitting the old 2-1. Um, anyway, uh, my folks left this morning to visit Brian and the baby. Don't make any plans tonight. We've got some celebrating to do. All right, give me a call after five. I love you. Oh, uh, happy birthday. means it's on, right? <clears throat> Hi, Colin. It's your mother here. I'm sitting here with you. See? <laughs> Say hi to yourself. Hi. Mm. I don't know how old you are as you're watching this, but if you're watching it, I guess it means that you're old enough. It also means that uh, that I never mustered up the courage to say this to you myself. But it's the truth. And you have the right to hear it. Oh, I hope you're sitting down, baby. I made the decision that you will know Richard as your father. And with all my heart, I know that he will know. And Colin, whatever you do, And no matter how bad the truth is, I'm afraid that it might be worse than ever. I was frightened. I met your biological father only once. And it almost killed me. I was still on a respirator in the hospital when, when he was caught and charged. The doctors, my family, my friends, they all wanted me. But it was a miracle. You are a miracle. It's so strange. 
to have the greatest joy come from the absolute worst moment of your life. But when I looked into your big green eyes, I knew that you were all I'd need. You were the best thing that's ever happened to me, Colin. And if I had to live through it all over again to get you, I would, baby, I would. In a heartbeat. Family is whoever's at home, baby boy. Okay? It doesn't matter how you came around to be. As long as you're here with me now. Well, since all of you guys are a bunch of chicken shits, and Cullen is about as talkative as that tree he's leaning against, <laughs> I'll go first. Yay! All right. Thank you. Big man. <laughs> wow. All right. So, when my folks just got married, they, uh, they didn't have a lot of money. They wound up living in this rat hole in this really sketchy part of town. Listening? Yep. There's this old guy, their neighbor, lived right across the street. Every day, he'd get up at dawn, and he'd start rummaging through the trash, you know, looking through the dumpsters and stuff like that. He'd come home with whatever he found and he'd build these sculptures in his backyard. He was uh, eccentric, you know? Crazy, but harmless. So one day, he shows my dad this painting he found. It's that classic painting, the one where the dogs are wearing the cuffs and the hats and they're all playing poker around a table. So he tells my father that he wants to recreate this painting, except in real life, with real dogs. So he goes out and he finds the right ties, finds the right hats, finds the right dogs, one at a time at various pet stores, I don't know, the pound. He keeps these dogs until the last day when he gets the last one, this big, mean mutt he gets off the street. So he sets up the table, he sets up the chairs, he deals out the chips, he deals out the cards, dresses up the dogs, he puts the dogs in their places one at a time. The only problem is they're a bunch of dogs. So, of course, they're not listening to a word this guy is telling them. They're all over the place. They're licking their balls. They're chewing their neckties. They're sniffing on each other's asses. It's mayhem. Well, well, that's what all of Alex's family's pictures look like. Chewing on their neckties and sniffing ass. <laughs> Why is it always me, man? Who is seeing all this? Tell it all back. My mom is watching this whole thing transpire from the window. She is laughing her dick off. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy is wrestling with this bulldog, trying to get it to stay in one place, when finally this bulldog's had enough. It lunges at the guy, starts ripping into his neck. My mom freaks out. She goes, she runs to the phone, she calls the cops. She gets back to the window. Now this guy is on the ground now, swarmed by dogs. <laughs> All of them. By the time the cops got to the scene, all that was left was a chunk of what used to be an old man and eight well-fed, well-dressed dogs. Damn. Oh. <laughs> wow. Man, you know, no, no, that's gotta be like the worst way to go, I think. You know, getting eaten by dogs? Dogs in top hats, nonetheless. Classy dogs. <laughs> all right, who's next? Alex, go for it. Hey, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. You guys are going to have to go eventually. He's so. just right there. Just go for it. Why'd you go? I'm not going to go. Why'd you go? Right there. Why are you always telling me when they go? I'm not going to go.
Hello. Hey, finally, where have you been? I've been calling you all day. I was starting to think you were ducking my calls. Are you having dinner with your dad tonight? No. Good, then I'm taking you out for dinner. You can pick me up and we can go someplace fancy. I, I was thinking section eight. Marcus took Jill. Sarah, I don't know if I'm Don't you know. dare finish that sentence. Birthdays are supposed to be fun, Cullen. So we're gonna go out and we're gonna have fun. Just you and me, okay? Be here at 8.30 sharp. And there's a dress code, so don't wear a hat. You're early. It's at 8.30 sharp. It's 8.30 right now. You've never been on time before. If you're not going to be dependable, you got to at least be consistently dependable. Yes. Yes. No, I'm... He, he's my son. Okay, is he all right? We picked him up about an hour ago, running down the middle of the street. Why was he running? Well, that's what we wanted to know. But the minute he sees us, he bolts. So we call it in, we give chase, we finally brought him down in the field. Wait a second, brought him down? What does that mean? We saw us and ran, Mr. Francis. Why on earth would anybody run from the police if they weren't doing anything wrong? And was he? Well, nothing reported, but he still didn't tell us what he was running from. Matter of fact, he never said anything to anyone. Got his name from his driver's license. It's his right not to say anything. He knows that. Did you at least read him his rights? He's not under arrest, Mr. Francis. He's either sick, drunk, or troubled, but he is free to go the minute somebody is free to take him. Well, that's what it sounds like. How many years did he get? We never found out. I don't believe you. It's the truth. Your mother, she insisted on putting it behind her. She was protecting you as well. Well, <laughs> she was lying to me, so were you. She was almost killed, Colin. Left for dead in the woods. Did you really think that it would have helped you to to know as a child? Uh, that's not the point. No, that is exactly the point. If she told you the truth, she'd be staring it in the face for the rest of her life. Every time that she would look at you, he'd be staring back at her. So, what is his name? Kalen Rose. Father. Just always wondered why I never looked anything like you.
Colin? Gotta go. Okay. Bye. Whatever you're thinking, it's not. Doesn't narrow it down much, does it? You're a strange boy, Colin Francis. I knew it the minute I met you. You were nothing like the other guys I knew. I'm starting to see the downside of that now. Me too. I really wish I could explain. Me too. Do it, Kev. Yeah. This be awesome. Okay. So this story takes place in a nunnery. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Nunnery? You just made that word up. Fucking nunnery, idiot. <laughs> a place where they make nuns? <laughs> what? You're an idiot. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no. Besides, this was like a long-ass time ago. There was a young nun. I don't know her name, so we'll call her Sister Mary. Sister Mary was showing a little bump in her belly. And this nunnery, it was like a voluntary prison for women. No boys in, no girls out. No way this girl could have had sex. And yet, here it was. The nuns report it to the church. The church calls it an immaculate conception. They say Sister Mary has the second coming brewing in her guts. For months, they treat her like gold. People from miles around line up outside just to be blessed by her. And all the while, her belly grew and grew. Then suddenly, she falls sick. They do all they can, but they can't figure out what's wrong with her. But her belly's still ready to pop like a pinata. Immaculate conception, they said. This was going to be God's child. It has to be. But it wasn't. You see, girls need boys. That's the way it's always worked. And when they can't get boys, they're gonna go looking for a reasonable substitute. No, 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 that's impossible. <laughs> it's the truth, I swear to God. Question, did the zucchini pull through? No. <laughs> it's, it's physically impossible for that to happen. Is it physically impossible, Dr. Fucking Genius PhD over here? <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's physically impossible, okay? You, how are you gonna grow a zucchini plant in a girl's womb? 
How are you going to do that? Where is it going to get its sunlight? A daily headstand? <laughs> How much sunlight does a seed inside a dark ground need, Shipper Brent? It needs tons of fucking sunlight, all right? Tons. <laughs> Alex, shut the fuck up, OK? You don't know jack shit about zucchinis, all right? Or vaginas, for that matter. So stop talking like you're an expert. <laughs> I was hoping that you'd fuck the fig. What? Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Once you said zucchini, I tuned out. Next time you should switch it from zucchini to pig. Or horse. <laughs> <laughs> All of you fucks, you fucking fucker. Right? <laughs> Just trying to help you out in your own story, man. Yeah, all right. Who's up next? Come on, we're rolling. I like this. Hey, Franco. You alive over there? Come on, man. It looks like you got someone's plan. Get up here. I'm not ready yet. Yes, Kelly. Sir, I have a Mr. Francis here to see you. Francis? He's back? No, sir, this is not the same, Mr. Francis. Mr. Francis, there's a second person with that name in my office today. Why do I get the feeling that's no coincidence? Oh, you're absolutely right. It's not a coincidence. The first one was my son. I'm surprised he didn't pass him on the highway. He came here to see an inmate, uh, Kalen Rose. Was he allowed to see him? Kelly, you have someone find Toto Hale again, please, and have him come down and see me? I'm sorry to be wasting your time, young man, but uh, I'm not at liberty to share any information about our inmates with the general public. But I'm, I'm not the general public. The inmate I'm looking for is a, a relative. What did you say your name was? It's Francis, but... The name I'm looking for is Rose. Kaylin Rose. You know. I know all the inmates here. Kaylin Rose is no longer with us. He's dead? Not dead, free. He's been released? How's, how's that possible? Kaylin Rose arrived September 88, convicted of rape and attempted murder. Sentenced to 26 years, served 16, granted parole in April 06. That lasted four years. After that, he stopped being our responsibility. His last known address is a halfway house. He left over two years ago. Where he is now is anybody's guess. Is there a photograph of him? Sealed up with his permanent records and locked up in the archives. Listen, son, this may be a blessing in disguise. I don't know what you know about this man, but... Did he have a cellmate when he was here? I'm not asking you to turn it off, just turn it down. I already turned it down twice. Oh, shit. Come on, man, be a grown-up. Go to sleep, have some common courtesy. You sleep all the fucking day. How much common courtesy do you have? 20 minutes. 20 minutes of common fucking courtesy, then you can go back to being an asshole. Oh, I've got a lot of shit. I've got a lot of shit. You, you fucking Albanian. You fucking you. Toto, you got a visitor. Is it a man or a woman? My name's Colin Francis. I don't know you. Colin Francis. I know. I came because I wanted to ask you a few questions about Kaylin Rose. The warden told me that you were his cellmate when he was here. You've kept in touch with him a little. You, you, you've spoken with him on the phone a few times since he's been out. Who are you? You're not a cop, that's for sure. What business do you got with Kay Rose? I'm his son. Rose never had any kids. He didn't know. I just found out myself. What is it you want to know? I'm going to find out what kind of man your daddy was. I know what kind of man he was. I doubt that very much. I need to know where he is. 
I'm not in the habit of sending strangers to people's doorsteps, even if you are who you say you are. Mr. Hale, I need your help. Yesterday, I thought I knew where I came from. Today, today I need to find Kalen Rose. I need to see his face, and after you, I've got nowhere else to go. So please. You know, I can actually see it. Not much. Probably got your mama to thank for the rest of it. He's in there all right. About a year after he got out, I got a phone call from him. He says his parole is almost up. He wants to move into Larasque, put the roots down. He knew that's where I grew up, so he asked me for help. Got him a job working for my cousin at his place. He's free. Cousin's name is Paul. It's also the name of his diner, Shea Paul. Pretty sure he bought the restaurant because the sign already had his name on it. Shea Paul. Go to Shea Paul, ask for Paul. Think you want to write that down? No, no need to take that tone, Toto. Nobody's forcing you to be here. Mr. Hale, I was wondering if you could tell me something about him. Kind of something you want to know? Maybe you're the only person I've met that's actually known him. I mean, really known him. Is there something you could tell me about him as a person? He slept noisy. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean. He slept noisy. He made noises when he slept. It wasn't like snoring. It was, you know, more like a hissing sound. I don't think that's important information. You didn't sleep underneath him, sir. I was that man's cellmate for four years. Never once in four years did I get a decent night's sleep. Well, it's five years later, and he's still keeping me up. I think I'm ready to go now. I read this story back when I was a kid. So a few days ago? Last Sunday? No. <laughs> um, so, my grandfather's cabin had this bookshelf that had all these little paperbacks in it. Strange truth, they were called. I used to read them when I got bored of staring at that stupid lake all the time. One of these books told the story of a veterinarian living somewhere in Europe. So after years of putting animals back together, this guy sits down one day and he realizes he just can't eat meat anymore. He just can't do it. He really wanted to, but he couldn't bear to see another living thing die on his table. After all the shit he'd been through every day, he just couldn't do it. And after a while, he wanted a real bad. He wanted it so bad that one day, he decides to perform a little self-surgery. Cuts off one of his fingers, fries it up, and then he eats it. What? <laughs> oh. He fucking loves it. He loves it. It's like the best fucking meal he's had in his whole life. So pretty soon after, he wants a little more. So off comes another finger. And then another finger. And then an ear. And then a couple of toes. And then a whole foot. And then a leg. And then the other leg until finally someone went looking for him and they find him half-eaten, lying on the kitchen floor. 
What? It is not done there, people. <laughs> it is not done there. There's more. Now, <laughs> now, now. So then they bring him to the hospital and they put him under constant watch. They give him months and months of rehab and treatment. And everybody thinks that maybe he'll be able to salvage half a life out of it. Until one day, they find him in his bed with a mouthful of his own stomach. Oh, fuck, he ate himself? Okay, wait, if kind of an idiot doctor eats his own stomach, he's just gonna be hungry again in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, that's the thing. That's the thing, strange truth. You know, they couldn't have put it any better, dude. That was a shitty story. Yeah, awful. It was a little weak. <laughs> Your chair's waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we got two left. Who wants to go next? Sit back down. Assholes. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Sorry. Oh, you scared the bejesus out of me for a second there. I thought you were dead. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm fine. I must have, must have dozed off. I'm just uh, waiting for the diner to open. Oh, well, that won't be for another 20 minutes. Say, I don't know what you heard, but the food isn't worth a sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I was hoping to speak to the owner, Paul. Oh, he won't be until noon. Uh, lucky him. <laughs> if the sign said Chase Sophie, we wouldn't be talking. Yeah. <laughs> Sylvie, my name's Richard. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Say, um, you wouldn't know who was working last night, would you? I was working last night. I was the last to leave. Oh, Paul locked up. Because I'm, I'm looking for someone, a young man, my son. He, uh, he came here, he's 21, dark hair. I, I think he came last night. Oh, Colin's dad? Yes. So you saw him? Yeah, I saw him, and then some. I'm sorry, that sounded dirty. Uh, we met last night. He had tea at my apartment. That's one of the reasons why I feel so groggy this morning. I'm sorry, that sounded dirty, too. No, no, it's OK. So you don't happen to know where he went. He was looking for someone. Yeah, I gave him the address and the best directions that I could. Directions? Do you know where Kaylin Rose lives? Rose? No. I mean, yes. Oh, my God. I knew it felt light. Oh, God, this is bad. This is really, really bad. What's wrong? He's got my gun. Sorry, kid. We're closed, man. Open again when the sun comes up. Are you, Paul? I'm sorry. I know it's really late. Uh, I've actually just come from Halloran Prison. Toto Hale, he, he pointed me in Look, your direction. Look, I don't know what Toto's told you, but this job, it requires work skills. And if you got some skills, then maybe I got some work. You ever done time in a kitchen? I'm not here for a job, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking for a man named Kalen Rose. Toto told me he got a job here when he got out of prison. Who are you? Well, my name's Colin Francis. I didn't ask you what your name was. And as far as Rose goes, I haven't seen him since I fired his sorry ass last year. So he doesn't work here anymore. I was doing Toto a favor, OK? But the last thing that I needed was a cook who couldn't cook. Do you have any idea where he might have gone? Beats me. If you were here a minute ago, you could ask Sylvie. She'll be back in at 6 o'clock. You know, when Rose left last year, he took my best waitress with him, this girl called Massey. Her and Sylvie were friends, so who knows? Maybe they're still in touch. Do you know where she was going? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? I'm not gonna hurt you, I swear. 
You bet your ass you're not. Sylvie! Stop, please. You're the kid who ran into the diner. How do you know my name? Paul told me. What the hell are you doing running up on women in the dark? Are you nuts? I'm sorry. I didn't even think I'd be able to catch up with you. What do you want me for? I'm for Mazzy. It's really important that I find her. Who are you? Oh. Let's get you up. Oh. I took a woman's defense course last year, and I, I never actually tried that on a real person before. Well, you're a natural, believe me. So, uh, <coughs> where are you headed? Um, back to my car, I guess. <coughs> well, I tell you what, why don't you give me a lift home, and then I'll try and point you in the right direction, and then neither one of us has to be outside in the streets alone. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like a plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just one more second. <coughs> Like ketchup and mustard, Mazzy and me. She was like my little sister. Yeah. Mm. It was a real little slice of life. Till that beast showed up. The beast? Her boyfriend-to-be. He was a cook at the diner until he put a knife to Paul's throat. And then when he left, he took poor Mazzy with him. He sounds like a uh, pretty bad guy. Understatement of the century. Anyway, if you want to get to her, you're gonna have to go through him too, and uh, he's no prize. You don't know um, where they're living now, do you? In Lorasque. I have it written down somewhere. She called me eight months ago, wanted me to send her some stuff that she left behind. She gave me an address and I sent it. But like I said, that was a while ago. I don't know if it's still any good. And even if it is, I probably don't want to go there. Not with that nice car you're driving and for sure not at night. I have to ask you something. You haven't asked me how I know Mazzy or why I'm looking for her. I'm just wondering why you're helping me. Because you asked me for help. That's what good people do, right? I figured if you wanted me to know, you would have told me about it. And I can tell by the look on your face, it's important. It is. He's in Larasque, so be careful where you park. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Richard. If I had known that he was going after no, no, Rose... No, 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 please. I appreciate it. Thank you. But you don't know Kay Rose. Find your boy, Richard. Whatever it is he wants from that man, it's not worth it. Thank you. Twenty-three eighty-five arcane, sir. Thanks. You know, you spare a little change, sir. There you go. Oh, God bless you, sir. God bless you. You're a good person. You're a good person. Now well, that is just fucking weird. Weird. Hello? I'm sorry to bother you. I'm, I'm looking for someone who may have come by last night. His name was Cullen Francis. I'm his father. I, I can hear you, please. Just, it's important that I find him. If you could just come and talk to me for a second. 
Nada así. Ask you a question? Yeah, for that ten bucks you give me, you can do a hell of a lot more than that. Uh, how long have you been here? Twenty-three eighty-five arcane, sir. Nice. Hey, a uh, spare bit of change, sir. Oh, God bless you, sir. God bless you. You're a good person. Good person. Yeah. <laughs> for Kalen Rose. He's not here. But he does live here though. Mazzy? Uh, I'm looking for my uncle Kay, my mother. She she gave me this address. Who are you? I'm Alex Thomas, nephew. On my mom's side. You never told me about having any sister. Well, from what I know of Uncle Kay, that doesn't surprise me one bit. Thank you. Where'd you say you're from? Uh, Vancouver. Um, my family usually doesn't come out this far east, uh, but I'm, thank you. But I'm here, uh, I'm visiting my girlfriend. Technically, ex-girlfriend, actually. She uh, just came here for school. And uh, so I told my mom that I was coming this way, and uh, she told me about Uncle Kay, and uh, I, I don't know that much about him. Uh, to be honest, I've never even seen a picture of him. Kay spent some time in prison, so she's probably just waiting until you're old enough to handle it. Mm, that's exactly what she said. He never talks about his family or his younger days. I guess I figured he didn't have any. Well, I really can't wait to meet him. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna have to, I'm sorry to say. You're not expecting him back home anytime soon? Depends what you mean by soon. He kind of comes and goes, and he's never here for more than a few hours at a time. And when was the last time you saw him? A couple days ago. He came in looking for dinner, and uh, he took a shower and a couple calls, and then he left. I haven't seen him since. Does he have a really close friend or a place that he goes to all the time? He practically lives at the Maldoror. Well, that's the, the strip club in the hotel around the corner. I don't suppose you'd um, have any pictures of him lying around anywhere. It's just, might be easier to find him if I know what he looks like. Closest might be an old driver's license or something. I can have a look if you want. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much.
wish I would be your baby cousin. Oh. What's his name? Kevin Jr. I couldn't find a photo. I guess we're not exactly a picture-taking kind of family. This closet's a mess, though. I could, I could look some more. No, no. Come back tomorrow or something. No, no, that's okay. I'm not sure where I'll be tomorrow, so I'll just see myself out. Well, uh, Case, I don't see you for a while. It's really nice to meet somebody from Case side of the tree. Really, uh, thank you for everything, um, Aunt Mezzy. <laughs> don't mention it. Uh, just under the right light, you kind of look like him. Not much, but it's in there somewhere. Mm. I'll see it's gone the second you smile. Kay never smiles. He says it hurts his face. Nice. Yeah. Uh, don't be a stranger, Alex Thomas. Ask you a question. Manager's busy. I already did. The guy really wants to talk to you. What's he look like? I don't know. He looks like a guy in a green shirt. Is he a cop? I don't know. Come up and find out for yourself. Shh. That's not a cop. Look at him. He never said he was. He never said he wasn't. Can I help you? You must be the manager. I'm Richard Francis. What can I do for you, Dick? I was told that you could tell me who was working behind the bar last night. That'd be me? Oh, I'm looking for my son. He would have come in here last night. He's 21, dark hair. Never saw him, Dick. Uh, he would have been asking a lot of questions about Look, maybe somebody else spoke to him. Not a lot of talk goes on around here. Anything else I can do for you? I know that he came in here last night. He was given this address. So if you could just take a second to think. I don't need a second to think. I told you I didn't see him. People like that don't come into places like this. People like that? People like what? Like you, Dick. People like you. Now, you asked me a question, I gave you my answer. I think we're about done here. I got work to do. Son of a 
Yeah, I gotta go, buddy. I'll call you back. No, 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 over. Don't hit. Harlan, he's coming back. He's got a tire iron. What? He's got a fucking tire iron in his hand. He took it out of his car and he's coming back in. What the hell are you doing? All right, guys. Let's stop to put this down. Oh, oh no. Oh. Bring it on. Uh oh. Big gun. My other, other cousin blew up a bunny. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. I've been wanting to tell this story since I read in the paper last winter, and I swear to God, it's true. If you don't believe me, remind me when I get home, I have the article. Jesus, I already know he's one. Okay, enough build up, just tell your story. All right. <sighs> Happened somewhere in Russia. Or, or, or whatever it's called now. Still Russia. Yeah, it's still Russia. <laughs> Do you mind? I'm sorry. <laughs> a group of lumberjacks are in the woods together, cutting down trees. One day, they get together on their lunch break to find out who's the toughest of the lot, and they are fucking around. One guy breaks his own fingers. Another drinks a whole cup of machine oil. Third one yanks a tooth out of his mouth with a rusty pair of pliers. Each guy has to top the one before him. So finally, it comes down to the last one. Now, it doesn't say what the dude before him did, but it had to be pretty fucking serious. So this crazy guy picks up a chainsaw, fires it up, cuts off his own head. What? <laughs> Bullshit. Spiro, I've heard that story before, okay? Dead, it's an urban legend. I'm dead fucking serious. I told you I have the article at home. Did he win the competition? Are, are, you, are you kidding me, man? He cut off his whole fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, it's pretty tough. I'd probably throw in the towel after that. Of course you would. Who wouldn't? I wouldn't. Wow. It can talk. Right. Tough guy. You, you, you wouldn't give up. No, of course he wouldn't. Why would he do anything everyone else was partaking in? No, please tell us. How would you out-tough a guy who decapitates himself off a fucking dare? With a chainsaw. We're speaking hypothetically here, right? Uh, like if I was in his shoes. Of course. Yeah. Well, if I was tough enough to be capable of killing myself, and I'd be tough enough to kill somebody else, right? So? So I'd kill everyone else. And win by default. Wow, I'm sleeping in the car tonight. <laughs> You're a piece of work, you know that? I think I liked him better when he wasn't saying anything. Oh, he's gotta say something, guys. There's only one story left. How about it, Franco? Is your idea to come out here You've been quiet as a fucking deaf mute this whole time. Just wait and go last. You must have quite the story to tell.
Coke. Yeah, I'm looking for somebody. Um, do you know a guy named K? K, 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 K. <laughs> I'm looking for Kaylin Rose. Rum and Coke? May I have a rum and Coke, please? Seven and a quarter. Fucking kidding. What? You come into a strip club and the smallest bill you got's a 50? Well, the rest is for you. Yeah, I'm looking for somebody. He ain't here. Yeah, who? The guy you're looking for. He ain't here. I'm looking for Kaylin Rose. You're looking for who? Kaylin Rose. Some people call him Kay. Carla! Come to the park. Hi, I'm Kaylin Rose. Hi, Kaylin Rose. Hi, Kaylin Rose. Leave the drink. Where are we going? Forget about it, man. What do you mean, forget about it? Well, it means forget about it. I'm not gonna fucking help you do it. You know, I don't know why the fuck would anybody want to do that to another human being. Because I've never seen them before, that's why. Might as well get something out of it. Wow, he's got a lot of girls up in his speak. What would it get us? I don't know. A good story, new experience, all right? I'm not the fucking hungry for a new experience, bro. I got enough experiences that end up with me having to burn my clothes at the end of the night. Look, I can't do it by myself. It takes two people at least. I know that's why I'm telling you. I'm not gonna help you do it, so forget about it. I'm gonna keep this. Why? That's a lady's gun. Not if a man is holding it. Are you kidding me? Fucking 22 is a bitch's gun. Fucking thing was designed to fit between two titties. Bro, a gun is a gun is a gun. You slip it in your boot and you forget about it. Man, look in the clip. Fuck off. Look in the clip, boy. Boy. Look in the clip. What? Bullets are like Tic Tacs. I spit farther than that thing. Do more damage if you threw it. Yo, fuck off. Yo, seriously, get the fucking thing off of me, man. What is it? Are you afraid of a Tic Tac? Yo, fuck off. What is it? Are you afraid of a fucking Tic Tac? Look at your face. <laughs> Fuck, look at your face. You're fucking asshole, man. Anything that'll make you squirm like a little bitch is worth carrying around, don't you think? Fucking shoot me, I'll get a band-aid or butcher knife and fucking cut your guts out, man. Yeah, sit down, settle down. <laughs> Yo, you need to change that ring though, son. Fuck, he's here. Where's he's coming? That was Harlem, he's inside. Harlem helped him down the stairs. Yeah, Harlan. He's been all cold like that ever since. He's awake. I'll be damned. I thought he'd gurgle or something. <laughs> <clears throat>
Colin Francis. That's your real name? Yes. Well, you wouldn't tell me if it wasn't. So, who are you, Colin Francis? Why are you looking for K Rose? Are you him? Please, listen. I only know his name, okay? I don't know who he is or what he does. I didn't even know he existed just a few hours ago. Please. Please, no. Please don't. You're gonna have one more chance to answer my question before I tape your mouth shut. Why are you looking for K-Rolls? He raped my mother. That makes a difference. We do it the correct way, my way. No, no, please. Please. It doesn't make a fucking difference if you keep complaining about it. We gotta do please. it anyway. No. Oh, fuck. Uh. Let's call Colin Francis. It's all right. Go on. Don't you want to know where we're going? I don't even know where we're going. Oh, yeah? Where's that? Nowhere. There's nothing out here. How can you know that? If you don't know where you are.
Tell me something, Cullen Francis. What do you know about Kaylin Rose? I know he's a lousy cook, a shitty husband and father, and his friends are assholes. And he raped your mother. How long ago was that? 21 years. Long time. So where'd it happen? Somewhere in the woods. The woods? Oh, kind of like these woods, I wonder. I wouldn't know I wasn't there. I think you were. What were you gonna do when you found him? I don't know. Huh? You must have had something in mind when you started all this. Now you had a gun on you. Were you gonna shoot him? Like I said, I don't know. I guess I figured I'd decide what to do when I had to do it. Good plan. Stop right there. Not one more step. Just for discussion's sake. Let's say that I am Kay Rose. So, here I am. What would you do with me? I guess I'd just talk to you. Well, that's not very exciting. Okay. Fine, you talk to me. So what would you say? <laughs> Come on. You want to say it, don't you? Here's your chance. I guess I would ask you, why? I would ask you why my father was violated and beaten and left for dead. I would ask you why I'm alive. I would ask you for your side of the story. Do you really expect an answer to any of those questions? I don't know. But maybe it'd be enough just to see the look on your face when I asked. You should have brought a flashlight. There's a Clint Eastwood line. One of those westerns he did. In this world, there are two kinds of people. Those with guns and those who dig. You dig. Why are you doing this? Not another word. Take the shovel. I haven't done anything. Take the shovel.
Colin Francis. Meet Kaylin Rose. Do you believe in karma? so right now but this is the best way that this night could have ended now I suggest that you find some way to move past it for my sake and yours do you understand what I'm saying to you Take as long as you need. Carl will be waiting.
change your fucking ringtone. Only rings like that for certain people, buddy. Harlan. What does he want to sound like? Yeah, he's probably pissed about his fucking floor. What do you want, Harlan? We're heading into the city, why? What's up? Yo, Harlan, you there? What kid? The kid! The, the fucking kid from last night! Oh, don't worry about it. Gibbs. What, are you, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means don't worry about it because you didn't see any kids, so you got nothing to worry about. So if I were you, I wouldn't fucking worry about it. Look, I gotta go, buddy. I'll call you back later, okay? Fucking Alex, told me waiting outside, man. Yo. Hey. You guys got beer yet? No. I need the cash show me. Hurry up. I'm not taking that cooler again. Kevin there yet? Okay, we're on our way. We going to Apple River? Uh, Cullen is taking us somewhere special. That's all I'm gonna say. It'll be good, man. Trust me. I'll bring the goods with us. Doesn't matter where we go. I'm gonna get fucked. Up. Guys, 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 I got some such good tunes to the right. Forget it, you're in the backseat for a reason. Why, why do you always choose? Because I'm bigger than you, that's why. We're in the woods this weekend. So it's Jungle Rules starting now. Oh, Jungle Rules, oh. That reminds me, you have a camp story ready? Something good, not like last time. Yeah, I got a good one, okay? It's gonna blow yours out of the water. No way in fucking hell. I've been sitting on mine for a year now. How about you, Franco? You got a good story? Yeah, I got a good story. Sky will come for us. 
us tonight And a heart shaking in the empty night Oh, why slide down in the basement tonight 